the <laughs> the most dangerous situation you ever found yourself in with fans? Oh my God, to Puerto Rico. Because it was a riot, not a riot, but a scuffle every night. Because I went to Puerto Rico in 1979. And I'm so stupid that I thought the territory had been there like 20 years. Well, they'd only started up three years earlier, so they were still growing. They were still, people were still trying to smarten themselves up to wrestling. I mean, they had wrestling before, but it would be like one night stands and they would, Florida would come in and then they had leave. This was the first time they actually established the territory in Puerto Rico. And I was the first American who went down there and trash talked the island. I'd say things like, you know, Spanish is a primitive language. I speak it fluently, but I don't because I consider it trash. And I learned trash was called basura. Oh, yeah. I could I could see the people when I was saying some of these words, and they were looking at me like, I cannot believe. Words have meaning. And if they've never heard this before, and I told them that the, the guys are like semi-homosexuals, but... <laughs> And the women are like unpaid prostitutes. I mean, I got strong with it. I didn't realize, I didn't, I didn't think it was as strong when I was doing it. But after now I think about it, I went, well, hell, I would have hated myself too. So we got, I got so hot down there. It got to a point to where I couldn't even walk down the street. Now I could walk down the street because I had a short beard then. And you know, I looked like a tourist. But I put that hat on and walked down the street. I couldn't go three, three or four steps because people ha- screaming at me, shouting at me, you know. And that's when I learned actually my my working knowledge of Spanish because you learn the bad the bad words first. They say, you know, yo de pucha. And if you're in Puerto Rico, you you hear the word and you say. Well, it can't be good because it's the way they say it, <laughs> which is <laughs> son of a son bitch, of a bitch mm-hmm. or that's dirty, bastard, <laughs> or, you know, and it was just, so, see, I thought they were just yelling at me because I was such a, a great technician in the ring till I found out, no, they're yelling at you because they actually really do hate you and wish you harm. Mm. So one night we was in uh, the, the big building. It was called Roberto Clemente, who was a famous baseball player. And we had a barbed wire match between Carlos Colon, who was like a god there, and somebody else, I forgot, I think it was Hurricane Castillo Sr. And they have a wrestling commission there, which is useless, of course, like all commissions are. But they wouldn't let us put up the barbed wire, so we said, we're going to start fighting from the beginning. But the place was, seat 17,000. 17,000 people there and they had to close the doors and turn people away that night. So on the way to the ring, we had to fight our way to the ring. How many times have you heard that? You've heard <laughs> of fighting your way back, right? Yes. So we actually, because they're all drunk. And I'll tell you another story in a minute. They were all drunk. So in they, I found out that's why they usually put their main event on 4th to keep the people from getting too drunk and they can end it on a happy note. That night we couldn't because it was a barbed wire match. We fought our way through the people and I got in the ring. I'm blowed up by now because I'm punching people back and forth. The cops, they're actually scared. And then I looked at that people and they had filled in that little aisle we come down and I told my partner, Frankie Lane, I said, Frankie, you see that where we just come in? Yeah. I said, you know, in about 15 minutes, we're going to have to be going right back through that bunch of son of a bitches. And I doubt if they're going to leave. And of course, they didn't leave. We fought our way back. And the matches were over at about 12 o'clock. Uh, Puerto Rico always runs longer than you think it should run. So uh, we, I, I didn't leave the building till like 2.30. I couldn't get in my car until like 2.30 in the morning. They waited for me outside. But they were very, very dangerous. They would throw rocks. They would throw bottles. They would throw spark plugs. They'd throw everything. 